Good afternoon. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for February 10th, 2013. Uh, the market continues to be in bullish quiet mode. It's at 69 out of 100 on weekly RSI 14, so right at the boundary of overbought. It's at 96 out of 100 on the 10 day NDX, so well overbought. The price relative to the 200 day moving average is at 9.01%, green bullish. The slope of the 50 is at 0.80%, also green bullish. ADX is at a very trendy 35.3, so strongly trending up. ATR percentage at 0.77 percent is quiet. The VIX index, the risk index, where we divide the moving average 30 divided by the moving average 10, that value is at 1.02, so it's still risk on. That value has a Z score of 0 0.20, which you see plotted. Uh, so we're still on the boundary of risk on. Uh, no change to the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios until 1 March. ETF2, the theoretical exposure, is at 100%. Model portfolios is still at 100%. No changes other than to update stops this week. There's a link to a trade of the week example from intraday trading in the chat room. Quick look at the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios. Uh, see. U.S. mid caps and small caps uh, have moved to the top of the chart. The globals are starting to slide down. So it could be a shift back to the U.S. Uh, inside the 26, it's the same, but with the addition of financials. Market health check. Vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. Thick black lines, the 30 period regression line. The outer black lines are the channel formed by the maximum excursion from that channel. That's getting ready to shrink up real tight here in, a, in another day once we get past this uh, gap. Um, the regression line is in the floodplain as, it, as has price, which has been riding the northern edge of the river here, which is the 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus one. The floodplain is plus or minus two. You see the slope of the regression line up is still very strong. Uh, the river and all of the floodplain are well out of the 200 period moving averages uh, region and that gap is getting wider so the strength of the trend is increasing. Uh, you can see how strong ADX is at 35. That's, a, that's about the upper limit of uh, reasonable strong trend. Um, hard for it to sustain that uh, that level. Um, we've been over uh, overbought mostly for the past 30 days. The jaws of PPO have actually closed and rolled over to the downside, although uh, it's hard, I guess, if you look closely, you can see the price has been flattening out a little bit over the past five days compared to the steepness of the uh, regression line in the previous 20. So this is still a, uh, a strong bull moving north, no overhead resistance. The ETF2 regional report, all the indexes are on a green. Globals are still stronger than the S&P, but it's closing the gap. It's uh, 50 in the S&P and 62 in the globals. Still bull quiet. Inside the U.S., it's the small cap, or mid caps and small caps, then large caps, then tech. Two strongest sectors, uh, European 350 and then the Euro-Asia mix. Two weakest are the NASDAQ and the... Um, and uh, U.S. large caps. Uh, world market model. Uh, a little bit of strength creeping back into the S&P here. Uh, most of the U.S. is now above average except for uh, that's the Dow and that's the NASDAQ. Uh, Asia, Asia less Japan, all above average. All the Europeans are above average. Uh, particular strength in Australia and Hong Kong. Malaysia is lagging. Inside the alternatives, gold, silver, treasuries, corporate bonds are lagging, as is U.S. real estate, but not quite so much. Latin American emerging markets still uh, lagging. Uh, inside the business sectors, U.S. versus the global, uh, the U.S. sectors are starting to catch up to the globals. 
uh, only in energy is the U.S. clearly in front. Global financials still doing uh, very well, uh, but you can see the gap between the business sectors, U.S. and global, are uh, diminishing as the U.S. Uh, starts to recover the ground it lost to the global. So. Top 30 in the ETF database, ETF2 database, sorted by relative strength, the blended monthly uh, strength. Uh, Japan total dividend, oil and gas, uh, timber, energy, uh, internet tech, uh, Spain, Austria, home construction, transportation. Uh, all of these that are green in the strength column but white in the average column are ones that are coming on strong, so materials. U.S. oil and equipment and transportation. Um, clean energy is actually uh, making a catch-up play here as it's on the boundary of green while its overall score is still yellow. These that are green in the uh, average column but white in the strength column are ones that are beginning to lag. Looking at the Dow 30 based on the same lens, Bank of America Cisco, J.P. Morgan, United Tech, and Travelers. So three out of the five are still financials. Uh, United Tech coming on strong. Uh, Hewlett Packard still remains in the top third. So early in its strength. Uh, it's white on strength and red on average score. Whereas Pfizer is the other story. It's, it's starting to weaken overall. It's been strong, but now relative strength starting to diminish. McDonald's, the value play looks interesting. It's moved up into the white and strength, and, but still yellow overall. Bottom feeders, uh, Merck, Microsoft, Intel, Walmart, and Exxon Mobil. ETF liquidity, just average daily dollar volume based on the last 30 days of trading. For reference. Shifting to the daily report, uh, no signals and overreaction and channeling. Let's see the, uh, the VIX Z score or the risk Z. Uh, the uh, slight increase in volatility over the last eight or nine days, uh, coming back towards the normal line, where the 30 and the 10 period are uh, at parity. still overbought. See the volatility starting to creep back up in. When, as this volatility was declining and then at the flat line, that's when this ratio would be increasing. And now this little re-entry of volatility, so it's right on the boundary of normal, uh, as characterized by this decline here. Uh, channeling signals in Brazil and oil, five days down in the VIX, agriculture in Brazil. Triple screen in Pfizer, 551W in Silver, IBM and Caterpillar, and then a bunch of uh, symbols that meet the auto framer, 2 to 1 reward to risk ratios, Merck, Europe, Agriculture, Coal, Exxon Mobil, EuroAsia, VIX, uh, Cliffs Natural Resources, and Latin America. So a lot to choose from. Quick look at the at the Dow Tactical Summary. Merck uh, should be of interest with a 7.7. .7 uh, reward to risk ratio 3.2 in Exxon Mobil, 2.1 in Pfizer, which is also a triple screen. So IBM is uh, number five on the max pain range compression and a 551W Caterpillar 551W. The ETF 30, a handful of dojis, a couple channeling signals in uh, that's Brazil and oil, five days down in. VIX agriculture in Brazil. Uh, Brazil is number five on the max pain range compression as well as being a 5DD. Uh, Europe offers is number two on the max pain range compression and offers a 4.3 to 1 reward to risk ratio on the auto framer. So that should be of interest. Quick look at the slope of the regression line, the 30-day regression line. That's the 30 days that converts to this time series and its own 10-period move and average. Um, when it crosses over its own 10-period move and average, out uh, more than one standard deviation away from average, like it just did right here, 
that's an indication of potential weakening of the trend. You can see there's a material difference in the nature of this trend of the last five or six days compared to the overall 30 day score. And that's, so that's an early warning of uh, starting to lose steam. See, the last five days have all been on the wrong side of the regression line. Uh, percent stretch relative to the 200 day moving average, it's climbed all the way back out of the hole. It's, which has been a one, two, three, almost four standard deviation move up, and it's it got as it's as far above the 200-day moving average as it was the last time it just collapsed. So this is an early warning, uh, an additional early warning sign that uh, about the market being overheated and this being a natural uh, a natural place for it to pause and uh, correct. So word to the wise. Uh, Z-scores of the swing gains, looking at holding periods uh, of the last 10 years, and then the Z-score of what the current holding, or what the current return is. You can see uh, S&P has had a pretty good run over the last 40 days with a Z-score of 0.8. That means it's approaching the upper limit of the normal um, holding, 40-day uh, holding periods of the last 10 years. Um, uh, mid caps and small caps. Uh, are already just slightly above the upper limit of normal, so just moving into abnormal, and that's and we've seen that in the, those two are, are stronger than the S and P and tech, and you can see how tech is lagging. Now the uh, the uh, emerging markets, which had been doing really well, have have uh, started to fade a little bit, and uh, the VIX has stopped losing and because now it's in the yellow instead of in the red like it was uh, last week. So you can use this as a guide for relative strength uh, modified by its typical holding patterns compared to the last 10 years. Looking at the Z scores of the regression line slopes, the 30 uh, has started to roll over like we saw in the uh, market mosaic. Uh, the 90 still is a uh, it's a powerful uptrend and still has room to go so there could be another four to five percent uh, leg left on the upside um, the 10 has pulled back a little bit you see it's still riding above uh, the north shore of the river that's price compared to the Bollinger Band River so that's still still favorable price with respect to the river for four different symbols for reference. I, I take that as a, as a favorable sign in gold still being able to hold 160 right here. Uh, treasuries have pulled way back or near a six month low around 115. Uh, so I think we'll see some treasuries buying action in there. Reference data on uh, the frog. I've got this sorted by what I call the TV rate ratio or the trading value ratio and that's a multiplication of the average range percentage 3.04 times this frog quality number um, gives you a number uh, which can be used it can be computed as a ratio of those two and uh, and then those with the highest ratio uh, ought to be the easiest frog candidates that where you blend uh, absolute value of the distance traveled, the percentage of that that it travels on an uh, average range basis and its frog quality number. So you want large ranges and large reliable ranges. So when you multiply those together you get uh, a ranking. Um, so uh, the good frog quality candidates in my view would be those that are, uh, I'd be looking at uh, Cisco and Verizon as an example, their frog quality numbers are in the green and their trading value ratio is very high. If you went with uh, Hewlett Packard, Natural Gas, or the VIX uh, with the absolute highest numbers on the TV ratio, that would keep you um, in uh, among very effective trading vehicles as well. So that's how you can use that. Uh, the fail statistic, you should know that for your, your standard targets. Signal to noise ratio stats, detailed holding period stats, relative strength based on the regression line slope, 
normalized for the market. You can see how uh, the, as, as the U.S. growth story, the risk on has improved. The Dow relative to the market has uh, pulled back. Uh, blended commodities are just starting to work and Europe has started to roll over. And that's everything I'm going to cover for the weekend report. It's Ken Law from Tortoise Capital. Keep your powder dry and your risk measured.